Damn it, how long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, it's episode 343. We're in July now, 2023, I'm Ethan. Welcome, Crab fans, I'm Liam. And we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. WWE is building towards SummerSlam. A lot of people are watching WWE these days, both live and on television. AEW had their Blood and Guts show this week. They have a Ring of Honor pay-per-view coming up this weekend that uh, has not been advertised very well. Mm -mm. And uh, there's uh, Miss G1 started in New Japan. Don't have a lot to uh, get into that with only uh, four shows uh, so far in that tournament. So let's just move right along to (laughs) SummerSlam. Really SummerSlam, which is in... Let's see... uh, if this goes up on Friday, it'll be eight days away. And I believe we have uh, two matches official for that show. And they are Brock Lesnar versus Cody Rhodes. And um, some other match that uh, that escapes. Oh, Seth Rollins and Finn Balor for the World Heavyweight Championship in a uh, rematch. Even though Finn Balor lost the first match absolutely clean as a sheet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so also hinted at, but not yet official, are Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso, Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler, and uh, I'm not sure if there's anything else I'm forgetting. But Becky versus Trish. Yeah, Becky has to run the gauntlet, though. She has to uh, beat Zoe Stark on Raw this coming week to get a rematch with Trish at some... Uh, uh, they never said at SummerSlam, even though it's clearly <laughs> at SummerSlam. Anyway, there's also a few little things going on. Like everyone in WWE now has a new branding nickname: <laughs> Big Bronson Reed, the Spirited Sami Zayn, <laughs> Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Mm-hmm. There are the old man's fingerprints are all over this program. Anyway, um, how are you feeling about the build to the SummerSlam? Um, I mean, in general, I think it's it's shaping up to look like a a fine show. There's not there's not one match where I'm like, oh my god, I got to see that. But I think there's a lot of stuff. It's it's been well built. I thought Raw was by and large a good show, at least as far as pushing things forward. Um, towards uh, towards the big show. Yeah, I think it was. I, I, you know, I, I like. I think Finn Balor's doing maybe some of the best work of his main roster career. I don't think that's like controversial or brave to say, um, because he didn't really get. To, he just kind of stood and smiled for a long time and had abs. Um, but it turns out, yeah, this guy can. This guy could talk. They give him some silly verbiage like they do everybody else, but he, he's uh he's good. He's good. Uh, it feels like there should be like a, probably a stipulation for him and Seth this time. But um, I would imagine Cody and Brock have a stip and maybe Becky and Trish have a stip too. So maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's just another regular wrestling match. But yeah, I think it, I think in general, um, the build is fine, at least for the top matches. The top matches all, I think, have done well. And hey, they... They they sure got some some good good old good old school heat on Cody this week, didn't they? Anytime you can beat up the babyface in his hometown in front of his mom, mm-hmm. you have you have to jump at that. Apparently, yeah, you can't just let that go. So they certainly did that. Um, I'm super into the bloodline stuff. I know everybody is. That's also not a brave or controversial <laughs> opinion. Um, but um, lots of people are, as uh, the segments have topped 3 million viewers on SmackDown, which is kind of insane. Yeah. 
And uh, at what point do we start talking about Roman Reigns um, in the way that uh, we talk about Hulk Hogan and Steve Austin as far as stars of the World Wrestling Federation? I think, well, we, and I think we've talked about this off the air. I don't know if we've talked about it at all on the air. Um, we, we were talking earlier in the year about how, you know, attendance was up with or without him. You know, he wasn't wrestling on every show. He wasn't even appearing on every week and they were still, they were selling out SmackDowns. They were selling out pay-per-views. They were selling out house shows like, and you obviously the common denominator for a lot of that show was Cody. So I think that was the feeling going into WrestleMania was Cody's hot. Cody's selling a lot of tickets. He's selling a lot of merch time to pull the trigger. The ratings over the last, I mean, for a long time, but especially over the last six months or so, that Roman Reigns and only Roman Reigns slash bloodline stuff is pulling are like, to me, there is nobody can argue (laughs) that that's not him doing that. And in an era where television viewership is the most important metric by which these companies will succeed or fail, that makes him that. Yeah, that does bump him. It's not, he doesn't have the same sort of numbers in the way of, you know, pay-per-view buys or shirts sold maybe that Austin did. But as far as like being a guy who means more to WWE's bottom line, so to speak, uh, than anyone else on the roster by far. Yeah. It's, it's Roman Reigns. I don't think, I think that's becoming quite, quite clear. And it does put maybe a little bit more into perspective why they have felt that they need to stretch out the bloodline stuff as long as, as they possibly can before paying it off whenever they do down the line. So to me, the, uh, the obvious thing here is you do Roman and Jay Mm -hmm. and uh, maybe you even get a rematch out of that. And then you have uh, Roman and Jimmy, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Jimmy can come back from his injury and, um, and that's at least, you know, four or five months of television right there. <laughs> right. And then we're into WrestleMania season. Uh, yes. so, then you, did you like a four way with Solo thrown in there at the Rumble? Yeah, I don't know if I'd pull the trigger on Solo just yet. I mean, he's done fine, but um, I would maybe save that to the end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, but if if if. Roman is losing the title at the, at the, the next WrestleMania, then uh, yeah, you have to do it before that. But if he's not, and we're searching this out another year, and why wouldn't you? <laughs> right. Then uh, I think you can hold off on that. So that's uh, that's what's going on there. Uh, NXT, um, they are bringing main roster people to NXT every week because <laughs> someone, Uncle Nick, Uncle Nick is a savvy uh, businessman, let me tell you, mm-hmm. and uh, has decided that NXT is once again a third brand because uh, the television deals are coming up, <laughs> and uh, he wants he wants he wants to get some uh, some green for NXT, and so various main roster people that they aren't using have shown up in NXT as. Uh, weekly characters or occasionally to do a job for a star or occasionally to beat underneath guys for three or four weeks and then do a job to a star. Mm -hmm. But this week, the judgment day, the judgment day is all over WWE television. They sure are. There are 46 segments on raw. And uh, this week they were all over NXT and Dirty Dom won the NXT North American title, um, which people are really into uh, into Rhea Ripley. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Dirty Dom is really I mean, he the, the guy's fantastic, but it's really more people are really into Rhea Ripley. But uh, the the Judgment Day, have they finally found a way to get the judgment day over here after oh a year a year plus yeah i think (laughs) i think it's clicking one because i felt like they were put together and then beaten a lot (laughs) and maybe 
making them a bit more dominant and also as you said plastering them all over television um, and making them feel like they're the most important characters not th- now that they're not like landlocked in a feud with 49 year old edge for nine months <laughs> uh they've been uh they've been a little bit more successful um yeah Rhea means a lot her quarter hours have been pretty high too that that maybe is they have started they did start something this week to give her like a feud because she's been the champion since wrestlemania and other than uh you know doing a quick squash of zelina vega in her home country they haven't really given her much to do she's just dom's you know she's just everybody's second in the match she has a belt so this week they started something where she she injured Raquel and then at the end of the show after Liv and and Raquel lost the tag titles, she and Liv got involved in a big big brawl. So you assume you go to you would go the big the big program, Paul Levesque's the program Paul Levesque has been wanting to put together since the moment he laid eyes on laid eyes on both of these women. Uh, is is Raquel and Rhea, and then as a pit stop on the way, we're going to get Liv and Rhea as well. So, yeah, I mean, they're finally giving her something more to sink her teeth into. But to your point, the the Dom and Rhea pairing is so over, and people are so into it that that I don't blame them for seeing for using her that way. It's just like, well, then maybe she shouldn't be the champion. But hey, now they're giving her somebody to wrestle, so. You can, uh, you know, you can have Raquel or whoever get a male partner and do mixed tags or something if you want. Sure. And uh, and Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville hold championships in the WWE. Mm-hmm. Sonya's been I, there for what, twelve years now? Long time, long time since the uh, the Hogan Tough Enough, right? Oh yeah, maybe longer. Maybe longer, but I specifically it was it was one of the tough enoughs. Either the it had to be the Hogan tough. Yeah, I don't think it was the Austin tough enough, so it must have been the Hogan one. Yeah. And uh and Chelsea Green. I would not have been on Chelsea Green ever holding uh championship in WWE. <laughs> in Vince McMahon's WWE, but here we are. Yeah, that's that's I don't know. It just felt like I mean, and I listen if you ever heard her tell the story like they filmed like a debut and a storyline for her during the Thunderdome that Vince watched and just decided he hated it and they never aired it. <laughs> like she was going to, she debuted and she was going to feud with Mickey James. And then they filmed a bunch of stuff during those weird marathon tapings they would do in Florida. And then just like hours of footage, they just never used. <laughs> um, so yeah, it didn't seem like Vince was a big fan and obviously she had been promised something by Paul and that's why she was brought back just like Bronson Reed and Johnny Gargano and all those guys. So uh, yeah, good, good for her. You know, she's, she's a hustler, you know, she, (laughs) she, uh, she's, uh, she's grinded it out. So good, good for her. I mean, it's the women's tag titles. Who cares? They're barely on the show anyway. (laughs) Right. You might as well give them to them. They, them and the only other team, in the division, Casey and uh, I'm sorry, not Casey, Katana Chance and uh, and and Caden Carter can uh, can feud over these belts forever. Sure. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I don't think we talked. About, maybe we did talk about this. See, Katana Chance busting out a top rope, uh super rana on a random raw yes after she had like screwed up a lion salt which one would argue is less complicated was absolutely she was like insane. you know what i'm gonna do <laughs> i mean she nailed it yeah it, was, it looked awesome it was incredible <laughs> it's like what are you doing <laughs> uh, any thoughts on uh the old man's fingerprints being all over uh monday night raw this week with a lot of uh lot of heat mm-hmm. and a lot of new nicknames for people the spirited Sami Zayn <laughs> included that's that's the sign that's the sign when everyone just suddenly has a new nickname and the terrible announcers are just shouting that nickname just shrieking it in your ear over and over and over and over and over again that's that's my main 
sign of uh of vince's fingerprints and to your point they were uh everywhere on this there, show. there was about a, a 10 second period where um uh rovert the uh, irish announcer and uh, Corey graves said collectively they said big bronson reed no less than 25 times in a 10 second period between the two of them it's just <laughs> it's it's really it's all over the place yeah i will say one little thumb up speaking of of big bronson reed they're given a lot of undercard people stuff to do <laughs> on raw which i mean you got three hours so yeah. you should be doing that but it's like okay it's not it's not it's not gonna win any writing awards but it's like okay you know nakamura and big bronson reader are having a scuffle and then yeah. Champa gets pie faced. Now he's getting involved, and now Nakamura is mad because he got disqualified and couldn't get the big win. Sure, fine, do that. Give give these guys something to do besides come out and one guy wins, and then the next week you do it again, and the other guy wins for eighteen straight weeks. Yes, it, as yes, it is. It is at least a little bit different. Um, and uh, and also being uh eight days out from pay-per-view and having two matches announced is uh is another sign that Vince is all over <laughs> yes Vince, uh, Vince is, again has his fingerprints all over speaking uh, and speaking of people that Vince has no interest in pushing yeah uh, LA Knight yeah <laughs> getting more yeah. and more over getting a little bit harder to ignore uh or or pipe in uh pipe in booze for uh for the guy right now which I think is very funny because I guess they're gonna they're gonna give him the U.S. title. I guess that's what the uh, he's in. sounds that way. Which gosh, L.A. Knight versus Austin Theory, just a 2006 OVW dream match. Is there anything funnier though than this guy organically getting himself over as a baby face, <laughs> and then? feeding him to building him up to beat Austin theory and then feeding him to theory and having theory just kill him dead <laughs> theory. So I mean, being in a feud with theory will alone <laughs> will be a test of this man. If he can get people to care about theory at all, but yes, then if, if they go to the pay-per-view or SmackDown, whenever they do that and, right. and theory just wins. Oh, that would be funny. <laughs> oh, that would be so funny. <laughs> Yeah. Excuse me. Um, L.A. Knight. Um, he he did some press money in the bank week where he was like, uh, "Yeah, they didn't want to push me. They wanted to make me a manager because they they were worried about uh, the fact that I was old." <laughs> it's like, well, that's a Vince. That's a Vince thing. A thousand percent. Also, Vince. Just doesn't he always used to stop pushing guys when they turned 40 and uh including even his own son triple h <laughs> um the minute he turned 40 uh that was it as a full-time yeah. wrestler and now i don't think a he realizes that like aj styles is like 46 years old <laughs> and finn bauer is like 42 years old and mm-hmm. damian priest is like 39 or 40 years old Mm -hmm. and i I don't think he's he but for some reason uh la Knight stuck out in his head and uh, as being too old to push which hey maybe it's just been so it's been 15 plus years since there's anyone on wwe television that has cut a promo like la Knight. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) mm-hmm All of a sudden, he looks like the second coming of John Cena, like when uh, the New Age Outlaws came back in 2014 or yes. 2013 and were suddenly the best workers on the roster. Like, oh, my God, Billy... some life on this show. <laughs> Billy Gunn was the best worker on Raw in 2013. <laughs> like, what? I don't I don't know. Like, good for LA Knight. That's all I can say. Good for him. Mm-hmm. And I hope he can work out. And to your point about uh, undercard people having something to do. The Viking Raiders Alpha Academy yes. feud on Raw. When uh, when Raw was here live and they did uh, they did Maxine Dupree's first match, it was this. Most of it was because 
um, Chad Gable hasn't given up yet, even though he has been given. <laughs> what is wrong with that guy? <laughs> I don't know. Ample opportunities to give up. Uh-huh. He just he keeps working hard and being funny and uh, and doing great stuff. But they had this little uh, mixed tag match on Raw. It was like six minutes or whatever. But people went insane for it. It was way better than it had any right to be. Mm-hmm. And there's stuff every week. It's way better than it has any right to be. And now people are getting into Maxine. And really, who could blame them? <laughs> Sure. I was, I was going to say this was funny because it started very Vince because it was Maxine recruiting Otis 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 <laughs> to the models. Yes. And isn't it so funny that a fat guy would be a model um, and that a beautiful woman would love a fat guy. Correct. Both of those things <laughs> are hilarious. Yes. To Especially to, if you're a Vince McMahon. So right. But now they've taken it in the opposite direction where she's like the the sexy model girl is becoming a pro wrestler. Yes. And it's it's great. (laughs) And somehow they made, you know, they made the Viking Raiders entertaining in. uh, Yes. 2023. So, yeah. Well, job well done to everybody involved. And for whoever made the call to pivot from Otis going with the models to Maxine going with Alpha Academy. A plus. <laughs> yes. And I love the models. I oh, love yeah. that shtick. Yeah, it was it was great shtick. <laughs> There's there was a bit they did like a Dasani water commercial or something <laughs> last year on one of the pay-per-views. And yeah. it's just and they just start pouring water on themselves. <laughs> and it, and yes. then the camera turns slow-mo and it went for like 30 seconds and I howled <laughs> at it. Like they yes. were they were, they were uh Masse and uh and Mansois. Mansois. <laughs> we're both we're both very uh, very well cast in those roles. There's still yeah, there's still a place for 1987. There's a place for a Rougeos on this show. Okay, there's yes. a place for some some lower card tag teams. It's just that the guy in charge for the last 40 years hates tag teams, right? Because he has a 1982 mindset that he has to pay two wrestlers instead of one. <laughs> It's a thousand percent what it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have, I have to pay two guys for this match instead of, or four guys for this match instead of two. It's, it's so dumb. <laughs> All right. Uh, so WWE going well. NXT. Uh, they have a pay per view coming up next Sunday, and uh, Carmelo Hayes versus Ilya Dragunov, and uh, is the uh, the top match for the NXT title on that show. Should be good. And Thea Hale challenging Tiffany Stratton for the women's title at a rematch. NXT goes from um, a fundamentally solid and unexciting program most weeks to occasionally being passable to occasionally being, oh, this is all right. And uh, I would say the build to this premium live event, the <laughs> If you're just called a premium live event, you're a cop. Agreed. <laughs> but uh, the build to this Great American Bash next weekend has been, uh, it's been all right. It's been all right. So that's what's going on there. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with any more NXT talk. You enjoying the big Baron Corbin uh, renaissance? Oh, man. Let me tell you. If you want Baron Corbin acting and emoting, <laughs> <laughs> this last month of NXT television has been for you. I finally caught up. I was like, uh, uh, Tuesday's my day off. So I had, I was like, uh, two and a half weeks behind on NXT. And then this week I watched, uh, like three episodes <laughs> in four days or something. And it's like, man, Baron Corbin acting is all over the show and filming vignettes at his house <laughs> where he's like drinking, uh, scotch and, uh, he's drinking, uh, amber colored alcohols out of glasses and uh he has a humidor and it's like all the things that he thinks are interesting about him (laughs) that are really just like hobbies or interests and don't make you interesting at all correct that's what these vignettes are filled with oh you like the grill (laughs) do you wow (laughs) you're a unicorn (laughs) absolutely it's like well you know i you know what i bet he's not a bad guy sure (laughs) 
Seems like a it's nice like, enough fella. Sure. It's just he's been playing football his whole life. He's been a he's been an elite athlete. Now he's been on the road with this company for eight years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like sure. When you have downtime, those downtime things become your interests. Unfortunately, it doesn't make you interesting. <laughs> and also some of the imagery in these vignettes, like where he shows up at what appears to be a clan rally. Ooh, I think <laughs> people I think people need to get out more <laughs> and, and realize what some of these vignettes look like sometimes. Oh. So he shows up at this uh, at this uh, like this outdoor thing with tiki torches, and there's oh. like a guy sh- a guy wearing a white hoodie. Oh god! That you on- <laughs> that you only see from behind, and then the guy turns around, and it's and it's Baron Corbin. So he's looking at himself, and uh, uh. You know, this is all about his rebirth and his renaissance or whatever. But when you show up and you have like someone in a white hood lit by firelight, it's like oh boy. Mm, yeah, that's. <laughs> This is bad. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we've covered WWE and NXT. We can move along to AEW. Dynamite this week, I think four matches on the show. Um, obviously, because it was the big blood and guts week. And so you had uh, the boy fight at the beginning of the program <laughs> with Hook and Jungle Jack. Jungle Jack defeated Hook. And then we got, uh, let's see, there was a Britt Baker squash. And then the, or I forget the order, whether the blind eliminator tournament uh, finals came first or the Britt Baker squash came first. And then we have blood and guts. But um, they have a million hours of television. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, as blood and guts matches go, I probably enjoyed this won the most of the three because Chris Jericho wasn't involved in it. Uh, what did you think of this <laughs> week's uh, AEW Dynamite? Uh, yeah, fair. Um, yeah, the the main event was it's what was promised. It's it's blood and uh, it's funny because there was a a new a news story floating around for the last week or so about how there's all these new rules in uh, in AEW. Yes. As they get closer to trying to renew their television deal about, you know, you have to ask for permission before you bleed and uh, for your blade, I should say, Uh, you know, and not going into the crowd and throwing, throwing things at fans and mostly stuff that MJF or Brian Danielson have done (laughs) or John Moxley. It seems like it's mostly designed to talk to one of those three guys. Yes. Uh, No seizure cells. No, no pouring drinks on fans. No taking things from fans. Yeah. Uh, can I can I briefly interject and just ask how many of these things do you think, or is this story just about getting all of this on paper so that you can't get sued by a wrestler later? That's what it felt like to me. It felt more we are covering our ass. Mm-hmm. We are just getting this all down and saying these are the guidelines. So if we have to fire somebody, it or somebody tries to sue us, we'd be like, well, we told you not to. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> More so than being like, oh, the producer of the match is going to have a checklist going down. It's like, hey, you guys aren't doing any seizure cells in this, are you? It's like, <laughs> no. Like, you guys aren't going to intentionally bleed either with a blade or a hard way, are you? <laughs> like, some of it, like the seizure cell spot was probably, they probably are going to. <laughs> <laughs> enforce that one there might the be a sign of... in uh in gorilla <laughs> <laughs> yes no seizures uh but no fake seizures mm-hmm. but aside from that i was like well they're just getting this on paper to cover themselves i don't think most of this is like in yeah. written in a stone tablet anyway yeah anyway. i don't think anyone's getting fined for you know for bleeding without asking uh right. Without asking Jerry Lynn's permission or whatever. Right. Right. Anyway. But yes. But yes, to your point, they they're all those alleged rules came out. And then this week they did a cage match. They didn't do any big stunts, but they did like nails. <laughs> they did a board of nails. They did glass. Mm-hmm. Thumbtacks, uh, whatever else, barbed wire, all of it. 
uh they didn't they didn't hang somebody but they strangled somebody yes um so you know if you were i guess if you were worried about the violence being turned down going forward in AEW's big stipulation matches i don't think you don't think you need to worry too much but yeah it was uh it was a good match it was a, it was there were too many talented people in that match for it to not be good um yes. it's those matches are clunky i think especially cuz I guess Moxley and Claudio have been in. I guess I think Wheeler was in the one last year too, but he was a, yes. a lot of people that have never been in a war games before doing a war games. So, it, you know, there's spots where somebody's trying to do something and somebody's like laying in the corner and they have to kind of awkwardly, they have to land differently than they normally would. But overall you got, you know, you got what was advertised. You got kind of a feud ender and uh, you know, for fans of, 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 of storytelling uh the elite one because they're good friends while the other guys brought in two mercenaries to to fight alongside them so the power of friendship won out what else what else do you need right john moxley got to not really do a job Mm -hmm. um uh he was handcuffed (laughs) that's right he was handcuffed and he submitted because yuta would not so Mox, I guess, looks got to keep Moxley strong. Gotta, Mox <laughs> has to look strong. Uh, so that was important. I was a big fan of the spot where Yuta grabs a fork and starts stabbing one of the young bucks in the head. And Moxley stops what he's doing and goes over and sits in a chair and just watches him like, <laughs> like a dad watching his kid play t-ball. <laughs> very funny spot. <laughs> that's very good. I missed that. Uh, uh, that's good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's that's blood and guts. We'll see. And coming out of that, Castagnoli versus Pack for the ROH title is on this pay per view on Friday. But they're running up against SmackDown and their own Rampage show. Mm-hmm. Terrible idea. Uh, I can't believe they asked. You're asking people to pay for, like the card itself it looks fine. Sure. Um, the problem is that they didn't announce anything for the card until a week before. Yeah, something along those lines. But we'll wrap up Dynamite here first in that uh, MJF and Cole won the Blind Eliminator Tournament and they're going to be wrestling for FTR, um, everyone's favorite, Mm -hmm. (laughs) everyone's favorite wrestling tag team um, for the tag titles on next week's AEW Collision Show, the Saturday night program. So... Um, I guess the question is, someone's turning on somebody. Right. Is MJF turning on Cole? Is Cole turning on MJF? Or do we? I would do the double swerve and have Cole go heel and team with MJF. I mean, eventually you're building to a split at some point. Sure. I would have I would have them maybe even win the tag titles together, um, and and just be friends for a while. I don't yeah. Know, what do you think? Yeah, well, it's funny because we were talking about this again off the air. And on one hand, when this started and it felt like a. uh, This did not feel befitting of like a world title feud. (laughs) I believe I believe you said it was a 1999 WCW feud over the hardcore title. Correct. (laughs) Correct. Uh, Yes, it says big European championship energy. Yeah. Um. So, you know, they're doing comedy vignettes where they're playing video games and eating spicy foods and going to the gym. And it's it feels it's it's, it's very TNA uh, mixed with, yeah, 1999 <laughs> WWF and WCW. So like it just it's it people loved it. Let, let me just get to that point. <laughs> like yeah. with like with uh, like with some of the more melodramatic bloodline stuff. Uh, I just have to sometimes throw up my hands and go, all right, it's working. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, MJF and Adam Cole hitting the double clothesline got a bigger pop than anything that happened in the main event. <laughs> so they're doing something right. Uh, and so, yeah, it feels like it's too soon. Like, I feel like people really love MJF and Adam Cole as a team. They obviously teased at the end of the match because Cole picks up the world title and MJF sees it and gets all suspicious because, uh, you know, MJF has never had a friend before. And so he just assumes everyone's going to stab him in the back. And maybe, as you said, maybe that could be true. 
maybe Adam Cole is going to stab him in the back and, and, and you do something with that. But I would say you have at least another six weeks, six to eight weeks. When's the Wembley show? <laughs> like six weeks out, right? Or less. Uh, about four weeks out. So you could definitely have them like win the tag titles and then you set up like the world title match is going to be a baby face match between the two friends. But then on the week before you do the Shawn Michaels, John Cena thing, <laughs> they win right. the tag titles, they're best of friends. And then on the go home show, Adam Cole, super kicks MJF and, uh, and FTR win the belts back or whatever. And then, and then, uh, and then, and then you do the, the title match from there. Like, it feels like this has legs beyond another week to go and, People are losing their minds. They lost their minds last week when MJF uh, body slammed Big Bill, <laughs> and yes. they lost their minds even more at uh, at the dance off and 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 at MJF and at Adam Cole hitting a double clothesline. So I wouldn't with something like we were kind of just talking about with LA Knight and other things. When something gets over this organically, uh, whether it was your plan or not, I think you need to look at keeping this together and. Uh, and seeing seeing what kind of legs this thing has beyond just a, a short thing to set up a world title match. Um, five more episodes of Dynamite between now and Wembley, by the way. Okay, so yeah, there's there's like I guess I just think there's there's just there's time to do both. There's time to have them end up wrestling each other if that's the Wembley match, MJF versus Adam Cole. I imagine MJF versus Punk is the Chicago show two weeks after that. One week so, after that. One week after that. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> what a weird decision. Um, yep. <laughs> sure is. Why isn't all in, just all out? I don't understand. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I would assume that's the Chicago match. So you, And hey, they've already sold 70,000 tickets. So maybe you even do. Maybe you do MJF and, and Cole versus FTR in a rematch at that stadium show, and you don't even have MJF defend the belt. I don't know. There's lots of stuff you can do with them as a team, though. And it and again, whether I think it's befitting of a world title feud or not, people are really into it. And it has been nice to see MJF do something besides the uh, the edge lord, uh, uh, you know, internet troll character. So it's. It's letting, it's letting Maxwell show a little range. Fair. Um, over on Collision, as we mentioned, uh, those guys will be wrestling FTR, everyone's favorite tag team. Mm -hmm. For uh, They've had, uh, on consecutive episodes of Collision now, there have been two FTR versus Jay White and Juice Robinson matches. Mm -hmm. um, did you see both? What did you think of both? I saw both. I loved the first one. I really liked the second one that went 58 minutes. <laughs> but I think the first one was better. And uh, uh, this show is the opposite of Dynamite in the way that it's paced and mm -hmm. that everything has time to breathe. And um, it feels like maybe they don't have enough people to run a full two hour show instead of the other way around. <laughs> um, anyway, what do you think? Any thoughts on Collision over the last couple of weeks? Yeah, so I did. I did really like the first match. Um, ironically, my thought was maybe it went a couple minutes too long, uh, which is funny because then they went like twice as long the next week. Um, yeah. I have not at at time of recording had time to see the uh, the rematch. I will watch it just because the way people were talking about it, it's like you know, a TV, a TV match of the year candidate, at least. So I, I know I need to go out of my way to see it, but yeah, I mean, that is, I guess the advantage <laughs> of having a smaller crew is, uh, is, Hey, you get, you get a lot of time, <laughs> a lot. Of, I mean, not a lot of, other than a, you know, blood and guts match. There aren't a lot of matches on dynamite that go, that go that length. Usually, it's, I mean, they've done thirty-minute draws, but nothing that's going that's going anything near that length. So, hey, yeah, good, uh, good, good use of minutes based on what you have. But yeah, maybe you should look at uh, expanding the uh, add add a few more colliders to uh to to the fill camp over uh, over the next month or so. So Willow won the Owen Hart Women's Tournament. And um, is getting a Ring of Honor title shot at the pay per view this weekend or this Friday because of that. Mm -hmm. And Starks 
kind of went heel a little bit against CM Punk. He held the ropes to uh, win the men's Owen Hart tournament and then uh, took the cup away from Jushin Liger, who they uh, spent thousands of dollars to fly in from Japan for a uh, 15 second cameo. <laughs> He got in the full ring gear get up too. This wasn't commentator Liger. <laughs> Put on yeah, the this... body suit and everything. Yeah, this is the, the wrestling mask, not the commentary mask. <laughs> this, had, this had the eye covering. He's easiest payday he's ever had. I should go... <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> um, any thoughts on Starks going heel again? He's a guy that was a heel, got himself over his baby face by being great. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's time we uh, have another little heel run. I don't know. I, I think they switch guys too often, but I don't really have a problem with this one. Yeah, I think to me, it's like if you look around, Jay White is in a tag team for now, at least. Yeah, you don't really. And obviously, I'm sure they'll go back to Joe and Punk at some point. Yeah. But you're going to need more heels. For 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 the Philster to uh to, you need some uh yep. some monsters for uh for Phil to slay. Um yep. so yeah, I think Ricky's uh, Ricky's a good heel. We know he's a good heel. Uh, and he did seem to have a lot of babyface momentum, and then something happened. He feuded with somebody. I can't quite remember <laughs> who it was, but he seemed to lose a lot of momentum after that. And uh, yeah, I mean, he still gets good reactions, but he's not getting uh, it was Chris Jericho. Uh, He didn't uh, (laughs) in case anyone didn't get the joke. Uh, And he uh, he still gets good reactions, but he's not getting like, oh, my God, we got to push this guy to the moon as baby face reaction. So, yeah, you can you can turn him heel. They just had Hobbs broke off, break off from uh, QT's little circus. Mm -hmm. So you could even put them back together as a as a heel duo and have Hobbs work as, as Starks heavy again, if you want. So yeah, I think you, you need heels for, for Phil to work with. And uh, other than Jay White and Joe, you don't have a lot. So the uh, Ricky's as good as anybody. So you brought up a, a few things there that mm-hmm. I would like, I'd like to briefly touch on. Uh, one is QTV. Um <laughs> Harley Cameron from that act is dating Zion Quinn of WWE, oh. who, uh, who was drafted in the uh, WWE draft this year, and we haven't seen him since. <laughs> or he was, I think he was maybe a free agent. I, I don't remember. Anyway, he was he was added to the main roster, and uh, and we haven't seen him since, like Odyssey Jones. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, I'm, and uh, there are, She's all over his Instagram. He's all over her Instagram. They seem very much in love as far as wrestling couples go. Mm-hmm. Who in AEW is trying to break up Harley Cameron and Zion Quinn by giving Harley Cameron her big break <laughs> and putting her on multiple segments of Rampage and Dynamite every single week? Uh, yeah, they do seem they do seem quite infatuated with uh... With her, they seems, they've decided she's the star. Smitten. Yes, <laughs> and they did add. They did add. Uh, I mean this in the most respectful and uh, admirable sense. Wrestling's wrestling's cockroach John Morrison <laughs> to that act as well. <laughs> like I I I'm genuinely like that dude gets paid, and I respect it. Like yeah, he, he is a reliable television wrestling performer, and good for him. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but uh, but yeah, that act is not. There isn't, especially now that Hobbs is gone. It's like it's QT Marshall, who's a player coach, and a goofball, and Aaron Solo, who may as well not work there, and yes. and now it's Harley Cameron. So and 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 Johnny TV. So <laughs> yes, it's like yeah, she's she's being positioned as a star, which is like she's floated around wrestling. To your point, like she's. In addition to dating, like she's, I know she's done like music projects with Shotzi and Scarlett and recorded people's theme songs and stuff before. So, like, she's been like in the wrestling circles for years. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, she's, uh, she's the biggest star on, on AEW Rampage. 
Yes. It is uh it's it's quite strange. <laughs> it's it's quite strange. I guess she was trained by Spears and Tyler Breeze at their school. I see. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, everybody, keep your eyes on this, and um, and uh, start doing the equations. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just... Start a pool. Who who is it? Yeah, yeah, something done that up. Yeah, uh, Ring of Honor pay per view this Friday night. Uh, four way tag team title match: Lucha Bros versus the Kingdom versus the Best Friends versus Aussie Open. Aussie Open is back, so that's nice. Uh, the the guy with the big ass uh is healed uh, he's uh his nickname should be the same nickname as a uh, cal rally of the seattle mariners big dumper that's funny kyle kyle fletcher he teams with a guy with a big ass yeah and he's dating sky blue interesting what are we finding out about about kyle fletcher as a person is what i'm asking i think, I th- I think he has a type mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think he has a type Athena versus Willow Nightingale for the women's world title. Shibata versus Daniel Garcia, whose dancing tickles me, <laughs> uh, for the pure title. Um, Samoa Joe versus Dalton Castle for the TV title. And Claudio versus Pac for the world title. And they're probably adding another singles match and uh, pre-show matches to that card, as we're speaking. But uh, who could possibly care? <laughs> I'm I sure it will be a fine show if you watch it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Maybe even a good show. But yes, it's not one that it seems like even by and uh, by AEW's decisions, they've just decided if you know no one who doesn't already currently know what ROH is and how to buy the pay-per-views that ROH puts on is going to buy the show. So we're not even going to bother. They didn't even I guess they did one mention. They Renee mentioned that the best friends are going for the tag titles on on Death Before Dishonor. I think that was the only mention on Dynamite that uh, that there was a <laughs> that there was a Ring of Honor show this week. So they just decided if you you already know about it, you know how to find it, buy it or don't. We don't care. <laughs> they didn't even do their version of the hard sell, which is Excalibur speed reading the card uh, fifteen seconds before the main event. That's true. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, news very personally close to me. Mercedes Monet money is uh, still on crotches, but mm-hmm. they would like to have money wrestle Julia. I mean, I assume you and every perish. pervert on <laughs> on Twitter. What? Not, <laughs> that's that's a, that's a wrestling pervert stream match. Let's, it's on the list. Let's be honest. I said they planned it, and you're like you and every pervert. Oh, I thought you said I they, didn't. Pl- I didn't plan it. I thought you said they would. They they would like to put it on. I think is what you said. Oh, maybe. And maybe I did. Say. Yes, you and. Oh, I meant the royal you, not you personally. I meant. I was say, yeah. I, anyway, I took it as an attack. Sure, and uh, and, and rightfully and, so. And we'll keep it that way. Um, Mercedes is still on crouches. That isn't happening anytime soon. So. Um, let's see. Anything else you would like to cover? Not really. Like you mentioned, G1's going on. It uh, just started and it's going to go forever. So <laughs> yep, we'll check we get back to... in uh, on that eventually. We get, uh, as we record this, 24 more days of the G1. <laughs> the G1 will continue until <laughs> morale improves. Yeah, there's that. All right, everybody. Uh, happy wrestling. Till next time, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. And we'll be, we will be back soon. One of these days I'm going to do this without stumbling over my words. I think I had a stretch of a few weeks there where I didn't. But uh, just a mental block. I can't do the outro without stumbling over my words. Anyway, until next time, uh, we'll be back with uh, more stories from the rest of my life. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features.
easy for me because I just have to go, I'm Liam, bye bye. <laughs> Hard to screw that part up, but you've got a little bit more verbiage. You're the you're the Excalibur or Michael Cole of of, of our podcast who has to who has to throw out all the all the lingo. You've insulted me like twice in the last <laughs> 90 seconds completely by accident but people, also people have decided they like michael cole now <laughs> so people are gonna be nostalgic about michael cole yep <laughs> absolutely unbelievable i'm nostalgic about lord alfred hayes who absolutely sucked when i was a child what was the, what was the line in that jumping double movie? karate <laughs> double karate <laughs> karate <laughs> oh man he sucked. He sucked so bad when I was a kid. And now so you go back and listen to him, it's like, actually, he's not half bad. It was just you were comparing him to Bobby Heenan and Jesse Ventura. <laughs> right. He was the worst guy on WWF at the time. <laughs> right. It's like now. Oh, my goodness. Shiny star. <laughs> right. Yeah. He'd be <laughs> he'd be like, at worst, the third best commentator in wrestling if he if he was yes. alive today. Yes. God bless him. I try to keep on keeping on.